Ιωάννη και με το Ρος και ώρα τάτα I greet you in that precious and divine name of my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ who in this time revealed himself in the true personality of none other than his Imperial Majesty Emperor Haile Selassie I. Greetings also through the Orthodox faith which is not a faith of rich nor rights but is one which is acquired through a mystical incorporation of a unity in one, plain words, to be born again. Greetings also through the twelve tribes of Israel, which were lost and scattered abroad, <coughs> and is founded in the tiny island of Jamaica by our beloved prophet, Brother Gay, now functioning worldwide and here in the islands of Aotearoa, New Zealand. Uh, my name is Tingilo Ness, and um, I'm uh, very happy to be here with you today to share uh, some of the uh, experiences um, in life that I have uh, concerning Rasta, uh, reggae in this country. Um, I thank you, Robbie, for another opportunity um, and give thanks to the Almighty. Um, thank you, brother, for the, the talk just now. That um, covers it all, so thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, well, what can I add to that except that um, my love of Ja um, has brought me thus far and um, there's, there's not enough time to uh, you know, share the, the, the love of our Lord, the Creator, um, with you all, but I hope and trust you will pick up some of the Spirit and take it with you when you go. I first heard uh, uh, reggae music, um, I would say... Uh, about 1976, um, in my heart I, knew, I know it was in me anyway, it was just a matter of uh, me waking up to it. Um, my parents come from New Air Island, um, I'm very proud to say that my mother is uh, from the village of Mutalo, um, which is the, uh, in the north side of New Air Island in the Pacific. Um, my mother's village was the first one to uh, accept Christianity. Um, the rest of the islands uh, were living in a state of darkness, uh, according to my mum. Um, the Vaha Pool, which means dark times. So when Christianity arrived in uh, New Ireland, um, brought over by some of the Samoan uh, missionaries, um, late 1800s, uh, my mother's village was the first one to uh, take on Christianity and not scare the missionaries away or eat them. <laughs> um, uh, prior to that, 1774, Captain Cook uh, almost landed on New Island and he was just about eaten <coughs> too. Um, when he was uh, uh, trying to land on the island, a uh, group of uh, warriors um, saw the ship out in the sea and gave him a greeting, like they uh, got a particular uh, a type of banana and painted the teeth red and did a kamate to a takalo in front of him and scared him off and he henceforth call the island Savage Islands. So, uh, all my life, uh, I would say I've been um, confronting that bogey, uh, being called Savage Islands. Uh, when I look around at the other Pacific Islands, Tonga is called the Friendly Islands. Uh, Fiji, uh, happy, serving, welcome islands. Niue is called the Savage Islands. And I had a beef with white people from early, when I found out why we were called Savage Islands. Um, 
Around about that time also was the end of slavery. Uh, abolishment of slavery in America. Um, Queen Victoria uh, increasing the English Empire. Um, slavers, black birders, whalers came down to the Pacific searching for new slaves. And they come across <coughs> the smaller islands like Niue, um, Kiripati, who were depopulated down to 11 people. And all the people in Kiripati today alive can trace their roots back to 11 people. So I know about populating and you know, from a small group of people. So everyone here, I would say, no doubt if we go right back to our roots, we're all related. Um, I had the experience of uh, meeting a Nguyen minister uh, one day at the uh, governor's house in Auckland City. Um, they were celebrating uh, Nguyen um, people who had done well in this country. And uh, the minister, uh, Reverend Sipoli, um, said a prayer and we all closed our eyes. My son, my eldest son, uh, was with me and uh, we closed our eyes and we heard him pray. And yes, Atua, thank you. And then he said, and thank you God for Queen Victoria for listening to our old people back then when they wrote to the Queen of England to tell her to please stop these slavers and black birders and whalers from coming down to New Ireland and taking our people in. I opened my eyes and uh, my son did the same and we looked at each other and we realised then how um, crucial Queen Victoria and the British Empire was uh, in uh, uh, preserving our country, our, our little island in the Pacific. Um, so I, my uh, anti-colonial uh, feelings went down a bit and, and I was grateful to Queen Victoria like the Reverend Sipoli had told me. Um, so my uh, uh, history um, and attitudes towards the European colonizers uh, I think stems uh, uh, from back in that time. Um, I don't know if you've seen uh, documentaries on TV about myself. Uh, but no doubt I, I would say you would have uh, heard about Shefu. Um, well, Shefu is my son. Um, and at that uh, uh, meeting at the governor's house, um, we looked at each other and says, uh, we've, we'll change our attitude. He certainly changed his attitude um, because of uh, hearing that bit of history. Now, that bit of history that, about Queen Victoria um, sending down uh, orders to uh, stop the slavery um, happening in Niue and around the Pacific. Um, we weren't taught it at school. So uh, that part of resentment about the colonial powers uh, cleared up a little. Um, where does that uh, bring uh, me to reggae? Well, my first um, uh, <coughs> hearing uh, of reggae music uh, comes from Bob Marley's album Natty Dread. Uh, a, a couple of friends uh, had come back from America, had just experienced the Watts uh, riots, um, very similar to what's happening here uh, over there in London and England today. Um, serious business. Um, they, from New Zealand, had gone over uh, to do some work. They were in the midst of that rioting. They freaked out and came back to New Zealand. Uh, at that time, uh, the population of New Zealand would be less than 2 million, I think. Um, and them coming from a peaceful, harmonious uh, country, um, experienced that and 
uh, immediately left America and came back to New Zealand. And with them, they brought back uh, an album, uh, Bob Marley's Nanny G. Well, they ring uh, me up because they know that I'm involved in music. Um, and they tell me, Timmy, you got to come and listen to this, so this uh, album. It's this black guy and he's got weird hair and he smokes a pound of marijuana a day and he's talking, kill all white people. And I said, yeah, that's, yeah. Because um, right about that time in Aotearoa, New Zealand, um, the same political wave uh, that was happening in America was starting to happen here. Uh, and awareness um, was starting to happen here as well. In America at that time, the Black Panthers um, were very strong and armed to the teeth and uh, talking um, self-determination, the power of the gun, and uh, all those uh, 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 civil libertarian things that no doubt you would have heard about or read about. Okay, well it was that kind of era. Um, and a similar thing was happening here in Aotearoa, New Zealand. For the first time, um, large groups of Māori uh, youth were starting to attend university, go to um, the universities in this country, and with them, knowledge from what was happening outside. Here's, a, here's an example. Um, whenever a, a record or an album or a song was released overseas, it took a year before it got here. A year and it was happening out there before it got here and became popular. Well, these friends uh, who came back from America brought this album with them, so 